this talk is titled as pet library. The reason it is called a pet library is that it touches you, it is your library, it is pet library and it is a pet digital library. Naturally the question arises what is pet? The three letters pet stand for petaflops, exabytes and terabits. These are three components of modern technology today. The petaflops represent the computing power that is emerging in the world today. The exabytes are representative of the storage capacity that is abound all over and terabits represent what we call as the transmission speeds that are coming up in the country all over. When we look at information dissemination digital library and a conventional library one is tempted to put the three together and then see what these kinds of technology can do for citizens of tomorrow and that is where the title pet library. Again I repeat pet stands for petaflops, exabytes and terabits the computation, storage and communication which are vital to the information dissemination in this country today. Let us look at what a person does when he looks for information. It is extremely interesting that when information is expanding, availability of information is expanding in one source or many sources, the person who is looking for information is really at a loss. What happens often is a picture like this. The user is at the center and you see e-contents and e-journals which are providing information, there are websites providing information. But the key question that the user has is that what is relevant to my requirement? How do I search completely through the system and get what I want? And on the other side there are printed media physically available, video clips are physically available, audio clips are physically available. Of course, they can be made electronic and made available on the net. The user is again at a loss to understand what, whether he is doing an exhaustive search, is he looking at all the recent information. So if you look at it diagonally, doing an exhaustive search of information resource and culling out what is recent and what is relevant has been the question that is plaguing the digital library research in the recent times. How does one accomplish this? That is where the challenge in information science research comes. How does one actually do it? Look at this view graph. Given the same situation, if I can get recency and relevance in my exhaustive search supported by exhaustive search that too in real time I got exactly what I wanted that happiness that feeling comes to the user and that is what is exactly important in modern library today. Let us go forward and look at what next generation networks are doing computations are doing. What is happening around us is that high bandwidth and low latency are becoming available. Lots of virtual private networks are being built. Any amount of protocol combination can be used, multi protocol label switching can be done. Computing resources are becoming very powerful, storages are becoming powerful, multiple operating systems can coexist and one is switching at much much greater than gigabit speeds. These are becoming very natural. So looking at what is happening, what is required by the user and what is happening in technology, the natural next question is what does it all imply? How does a user benefit? If you look take a close look at what technology can do, extremely high speed means it implies annihilation of distance. Low latency means coilless events in time, you can see it as it happens elsewhere. Actually teleport applications, you can teleport people, events and observations 
which is a phenomenal thing that is happening because of applicate the technology today. The interesting thing is two large things that are impact human life namely health and education require both of them and that is where the interest in technology is. Let us take a look at information dissemination in general. What has been the mode of dissemination of information in the past that has to be seen. They are books, electronic resources, theses, abstracts, all sorts of manuscripts they were all done in the past. They were added with electronic resources, digital libraries in the recent past and now going forward the students, faculty, researchers and general interest the user groups are expanding. Now each user group has a different requirement. We are in a sense bringing together what we know as a traditional library and what we see as a modern library together and we need to get information from the physical world as well as electronic world together and then present it to the user and technologies like scanning and storing several old documents, old manuscripts are also helping people create millions and millions of pages of text, of pictures, of images that were there in the libraries for ages into the electronic form. But then how do I search through them? How do I find out exactly what I want? That question remains. Let us look at the lower role of library and librarian. This uh, you know society where librarians play a major role in modern society. Collection of resources of literary value is a library. Someone should have taken effort to document all of them and put them in place. Librarian is generally seen as a passive guardian of these resources. Well, sometimes librarians do take a proactive interest. An example is the county library in the United States can be mentioned where if a school gives an assignment and you go to the nearest county library, the librarian there will tell you what the assignment is for the week and will tell you all the relevant resources that are required to complete the assignment. You must have a system like that evolved in our society where relevant information is brought in without asking. How does one get the society to do that will be a challenge for tomorrow. Until the dawn of information age, if you want to say for citizens library was the only source of knowledge. But everything changed with the internet age. Information is required in fingertips, knowledge is required in a comprehensive form. In a lighter vein, we find that students no longer solve problems, but they look for solutions in cyberspace. Comprehensive service while looking for information is what is expected by citizens in general. If you look at library users, it is dwindling. If it has 100, in 1960, it will be near 0 in 2009. That is a kind of decline that has taken place in those who visit libraries because you do not find anything that is quote unquote found useful by visiting a library. Whatever I need, I can get it on my computer through the digital library means. For example, myself being a computer science professor, if I want to refer to anything, my instinctive reaction is to look at something like a Google Scholar to get the information and when I type in a few keywords I get papers which are written in that area which I look at more deeply, download, maybe print out, look at it more deeply, read them a few times and then cast them aside and then form my own opinion, generate some more papers of my own. That is a natural reaction. You do not really go to a library, look at a physical printed book. This is true of everybody that is happening today. If we look at information usage, it was nearly 0 in 1960s because internet was not available that easily. 80s it started becoming available. Around 2000 the hell broke loose and in 2009 
it has gone up by 10,000 times. This is a phenomenal increase in number of people that are using it. The positive way of looking at what is happening around us is this. Every internet user is a potential library user. That is a paradigm shift that is required. In that sense we can say more people visit library today. In fact, the responsibility of a librarian has increased several fold. I would not say 100 or 1000, it is million fold if you want to call it to cater to these people who come in electronically to the library. How does this single person react to multiple requests? And also these requests are not in one particular sector. It is not in one particular type of information. They want multiple sources of information. Also, if you look at research and research interests, people no longer do physics by itself or biology by itself. It is a combination of physics and biology that makes a lot of sense. If they mix it with molecular chemistry, they have some health research output. That is a combination that is taking place. The researcher of today is evolving into a well-rounded individual who understands the science in its traditional form the biology and the natural sciences in its traditional form and also the technology in its modern form and try to bring the two together to solve problems of today. And if somebody is working on personalized Medicare and delivering medicines in a personalized form, forming those medicines, forming those molecules on the fly, you can imagine how much of information that he will be needing and what diverse resources and diverse types of information that he will be needing. That is a kind of input a library has to provide today. How does one do it? Such a complex world, where do people get information? As librarians, library science people, how can we help? That is a question that comes uppermost in one's mind. But there is an important distinction though. You see the font difference, one is a classical font, other one is a modern font. Library as we today naturally kindles interest in other allied areas. The reason is when you see a book, you not only see the book that you are looking for, you not only go to the shelf in mathematics or science or biology, you also pass through the shelves in which other areas of books are kept, books in other areas are kept. You would like to naturally look at what is new in those areas, what is the new publication that has come. It creates a natural interest and you look at them. In some sense, it helps you browse. But the other side of uh, modern library is that it does not let you browse at all. If I say you cannot browse in digital libraries, somebody will sit up and ask what are you talking about? The point is I only search, I search with keywords which means I know what I am looking for or at least I know tangentially what I am looking for. I have to give some approximate keywords of the type of information I am looking for. Otherwise I cannot use a modern digital library. That is a big difference. In effect it does not help me browse, it does not show me all the books that the digital library has. It gives me all the in books or information sources that the library thinks is relevant to me. That is a paradigm shift. I am no longer in control of the situation. Sometimes I feel a little left out. What is happening? There is a huge library which I could visit. Sitting here in Madras, we can say Kanimara library, huge library that you can visit. See so many things, so many books, so many subjects. You feel proud of visiting a library and here is a digital library where unless you know exactly what you want to look for, you cannot get relevant information. How do you get over this problem? So modern library combines traditional modes of collection as well as electronic access. That is how these are built today, the heterogeneous mixture and we are in a digital world, a location of where the information is kept is not a barrier, it can be anywhere, it can be a collection of sites. Distributed units can be formed, that is you can have libraries which are put together electronically. 
and also what is called you know active generation of information can take place research labs where information is generated can become a virtual part of the library. You can also see actual experiments that are taking place so that you not only understand a concept you also know how it is demonstrated in a laboratory or in a particular research lab how synthetic experiments are done how very difficult experiments are done. You can even say a state library can be a virtual holding company which consists of all these things that can be a definition of a possible definition of a modern library. In fact in my opinion a chief librarian of today should be redesignated as chief information scientist because he has to search for things he has to answer queries which he has not heard of before every time he is faced with a new situation. The chief information scientist should be capable of handling multiple specialities or supported by specialists from research labs in a virtual mode that requires meshing technology with the library of today. In fact the uh, small print that is there it shows you that there used to be what is called a keep and chop operator in a computer center. If you go around asking what are they doing today because those gadgets do not exist anymore they transform themselves to fit the modern world. Perhaps something like that has to happen for librarians becoming information scientists. Then the question of organizing the resources. The most traditional way of organizing the resources is indexing. Ranganathan is famous for finding this index in the library domain. In fact, it is said the contribution of Ranganathan to library science is equivalent to contribution of Einstein to physics. It is that great a contribution. Now the question is what is this indexing going to do when traditional and modern libraries are mixed together and the modern library has different forms of information. The information in different forms, the sources are different, they are all distributed how does one handle it that becomes a key issue. Going back if you look at the electronic era keywords take the place of index even audio video files people want iconic indexing. I want to look at something that is happening and then say this is what I want this is what people refer to as annotation somebody has to sit down and annotate the whole thing or the process of annotation has to be made automatic. In summary the information resources are in multiple media forms and formats. What is the complexity arising out of it? It opens up two worlds. One the media forms are library science issue, media formats are technology issue. When library science issue the one is creative solutions are required, annotation is the only known solution today often not useful because it is very labor intensive. On the media format it is a technology issue multiple solutions are available but standardization is the issue, key issue. So between the two we need a solution which can help us in indexing and which can help us in handling the technology of multiple types. So that multiple resources multiple library sites which are basically computer sites can come together because they follow the same standards of exchange, same standards of query processing, same standards of everything you know that is where the real key thing is. The quantum to be handled was limited by the physical availability in the yester years the old libraries but in the modern electronic library there is virtually no space limitations. But, but you have to go there and get it which means the bandwidth is becoming a limitation accessing all these things and continuous availability of bandwidth to do so it turns out to be a challenge. The next generation networks and the na national knowledge network really address this issue next generation networks provide you the facility for doing these things. National Knowledge Network is one particular instance of realizing 
the next generation network in physical form so that different sources of information can come together and that is where NKN plays a major role in bringing people together. While NKN brings people together the questions that we posed earlier on in terms of how do I search, how do I exhaustively search, how do I make sure what I have is recent and relevant, recent and relevant those have to be answered by application potential and when multiple media forms and formats are available one has to have a very good way of automatic indexing and a very good standardization practice which go together to make a modern digital library effective in the NKN era. If you look at the networking technology and why it attracts attention there are curious things that are there about it one is the annihilation of distance and near instantaneous observation of events both of them are not known to mankind they are actually new to mankind I cannot see what is behind me leave alone what is 100 miles away from me. So that becomes a serious issue and I am becoming curious because here is a technology which allows me to see what is behind me and what is 100 miles away 1000 miles away 2000 miles away and what happened thousands of years before I was born they are all available in some form or the other in this particular technology that makes it curious and these high bandwidths and low latencies that are available make it actually happen and the costs are extremely modest and it is doable and one finds it that it can be accomplished if you can handle the subtleties of fielding this technology. Technology by itself is extremely simple and it works for you. The most important thing to understand in this is the technology is very simple and it is very comprehensive but comprehending that technology is simple and it is all pervasive is a difficult problem and that is where people find it extremely difficult to find two points coming together, two viewpoints coming together and the national knowledge network is an attempt at bringing all these perceptions together for a single benefit of creating a nation that by itself will become creative and that will itself become healthy. A healthy nation is a productive nation, a educated nation is a creative nation and therefore if you address these two problems you have a productive and creative nation nothing can stop you from becoming a global superpower using the information and communication technologies and that is where the NKN becomes important. Let us see what are all the applications that NKN can do. It can bring together all resources of various types it can have countrywide classrooms, it can increase the peer group interactions, it can create critical mass of scientists in key areas. It can bring to the databases are very attractive even from the library science point of view you need to get people together. It can create virtual laboratories which can become active information resource for a library. It can bring out the essence of collaborative mega science projects for public use as and when things happen. Innovative things can be explained very simply using experiments. And there is a list of things that one can do when you have very high bandwidth. And basically when you talk about bandwidth they are talking about 10 gigabits and above and the moving into terabits because this whole thing is moving at a very fast rate. Education, research, healthcare, governance, form care and high performance computing examples such as weather modeling they all benefit by this. So what is NKN? It consists of a core which is at very high speed and it has distribution which is at moderate speed and the larger area that is served and then the edges which are institutions, research laboratories, schools, colleges, universities which are all coming together to share information. So people pour information into the knowledge network, people take information from the knowledge network. Mind you the original question of recency and relevance and exhaustive search has to be addressed on the top of all this and we are only saying here is a 
way of coming to bringing together knowledge that is created by society in one unit using one common unit. So the philosophy is to create something which is scalable in both reach and speed so that it can go across the country and act as a common backbone where everything can come and attach. So if you have different types of technologies they can come and attach. You have different grouping of people they can come and attach. You have different libraries they can come and attach. It is very easy to see a library which is formed out of NKN and NKN resources which is a federal library or a state library whatever. It can even be a common library put together for citizens use by NGOs. All these are becoming possibilities today because NKN is available and because knowledge institutions are getting integrated and that is where the power of the whole thing is. So the feature of NKN if you look at you know high capacity and high scalability in terms of backbone and the most important you know property of quality of service and security going down it is a huge test bed for various implementations and one of them can be the library sector, information sector and it is dedicated and owned by this NKN and you have a bandwidth that is provided by multiple long, national long distance service providers which are put together as one large network that spans the entire country like this. You look at here the colorful graph that you is in front of you showing several lines in different colors they are all multiple 10 gigabit links red dots are huge core nodes there are actually 24 of them and there are about 600 of them which are in the distribution which will reach out to the entire nation and from there they will span out into 1500 to 2000 primary nodes and then networks which are connected on to this and several institutions come together at lower speeds and then get connected to NKN at gigabit or above. So this is a, this is a typical topology that is shown here and which is partially realized and it is going on and the whole thing will become a reality very soon. The question is what India needs to do given this setup. NKN reach is being enhanced it will touch every educational institution. We need homegrown search engines with the domain specific capabilities to mimic the librarian's role. This is a very important thing when we say homegrown search engines the local needs, the local search schemes, local reactions to what can be ha used as an indexing term, iconic indexing, audio indexing all of them will come into picture and India having diverse languages, dialects all of them have to come into picture. The citizen education especially under age group of you know 20 has to be put in the reverse gear saying that you have to read books of the conventional type because reading books of the conventional type addresses a totally different issue. Reading a book of a conventional type makes a person think, imagine and visualize. I repeat think, imagine and visualize. Everything that is written in a book be it a novel or a textbook or whatever actually helps you visualize a situation. For a person to grow, learn, understand you need to have that capability to visualize and that capability to visualize can come only if you are able to do with your own mind and that requires extensive reading that cannot be replaced. If a computer gives you renders you all those visualization somebody is doing the thinking for you and you are not doing it you are only seeing you are not visualizing there is a huge difference between the two those who are in the profession of teaching will understand the difference between seeing and visualizing there is a huge difference that we have to encourage in the youngsters and we have to create another stream of people which we call I tend to call as newer aggregated contents generation people. These people who create newer aggregated contents which they think you know I have used it it is likely to be used. 
by somebody else. The inspiration for this comes from computer science. Actually, there is a memory called cache memory in computer science. You can build, build CPUs or anything, you use the word cache. What it does is, it brings in something hoping it will be used or reused. It keeps it in what is called a cache memory. It may be reused by the same person in time or in space or it can be used by somebody else in time or in space. Multiple usages of the same information and multiple usages of the same information in time and space. That caching is a very important aspect. So what people do tend to do today is to bring this information and make it available. One crude form of that which is already making rounds is to send you a URL after seeing a piece of information which you think is going to be of interest to 10 other friends of yours. If you look at the URL, it will have something something dot com or dot org the source, then they will say query type and then all sorts of characters, ambersands, signs, numbers, everything will appear. That is actually a query, a keyword query that will go and bring that piece of information back for you. That is an aggregated content. One has to organize this aggregated content and there are so many millions and billions of them that one person or one single organized effort cannot do that. There has to be multiple people with motivation for doing it. The best way of spreading out such popular working is through non-governmental organizations or NGOs. I see a great role for them to join in and then say how to bring in this knowledge. Not only those knowledge which we think are computer based, but we should also have traditional knowledge that is acquired by citizens of this country from yester years should also be documented and brought into this so that it is made available to people and they do not forget what Indian culture and what Indian society was and how great it was and what made people contribute to the highest level as far back as thousands of years in this great country. Jai Hind.